Hello and welcome to yet another video. Today I want to focus a bit on interactions between a chatbot or like a large language model like ChatGPT, um, a website and the user because I think there's so much more potential than it's currently being done. And if I want to look at a negative example, let's look at Bing Copilot because basically they could make the best shopping experience ever. Same as Google, they have Bing Shopping, so they basically have all the data of all the offers from all the shops in the world, so they could make a great shopping assistant. But let's do a small reality check. So I like to buy, a, let's do a 24-inch monitor below, yeah, $500. So let's see what happens. So it's searching for it, this is just good, it's putting real results, and now... Yeah, we are getting text. So we get free offers in text form and some ads and links and yeah. Um, and I guess I will be using a normal price comparison page again, because this or being shopping directly or whatever, because this just sucks, <laughs> to be honest. So I try to make this better. Let's take a look at that. So my idea is basically that we will have a chat and we're using, as always, my video chatbot UI, which is connected to Rivet in the back end, which is connected to ChatGPT. And we're using a front end, and I've chosen Anvil. At the moment, we see nothing here. And of course, if we would see this in reality, the chat and this website should be one. Or maybe on a mobile device, there is no web, there is no chat. There is just a push to talk button, and the AI can, um, yeah, we can just talk back. But enough of the talk, let's see what happens here. So, I want to buy a MacBook. Let's see how it will be handled. So, we wait a bit, and what do we get? I've displayed a variety of MacBook models for you to consider. Let me know if you need assistance. And, yeah, here we are. We have uh, our results, and we can look at them. I mean, I did not build, like, product page views now, so this is the only view we have, but um, this is already a start. So instead of listing them in the chat, we already make the LLM interact with the website via function calling. And of course, we can do more than this. So this is just the start. So um, I only like to see model, recent models because there is something of 2020 in here. Uh, let's just say that. That should be enough. Okay, now as we can see, it filtered it and it's also telling us, yeah, I've updated to display to only show the most recent models of MacBooks. Great. So now we have narrowed down our choice. Okay, um, out of these, which one, two, three would you recommend to me? So let's get a bit of help here in deciding. And yeah, now. As we can see, it's highlighted three different products for us and giving us some more information about the ones it highlights. So the first one offers a balance of performance and power. The next one has more power and a higher quality display. And then there is uh, also one with a bigger screen here. Cool. So um, maybe, maybe I want to know more. Uh, give me some more details. Uh, about the differences of the first two of them. Okay, now it misunderstood me a bit. I don't know why it brought back the other products, um, but generally it's answering, as we can see. So it's answering me about the two I requested here. We can see it's answering about this one and this one. Those were the ones we were looking at before as well. And now it's giving us some more facts as we can see so that we can actually make a decision. So here it's telling us that the 2024 is more powerful with a better processor, more RAM and additional graphics score, higher resolution screen and so on. But it's heavier ah, and more expensive. So the MacBook Air is more portable and cost effective. I mean, I'm not sure about the cost effective because it's just nine euros, but heavier could be, could be a good point being made. But yeah, um, that uh, is what I wanted to show you. It's not perfect, as you can clearly see. It's a bit buggy. Um, there can also be 
the interactions could be different, we could add more interactions. I'm not sure if this is perfect, but that's not the point of it. Um, now we have a with Envil here, with this environment we are building and with a real date time database from Firebase, we basically unlock the ability to create those prototypes and to find out how we can do this in the future and how we can do it best. So let's take a look at what is happening behind the scenes. So first of all, let's go to Rivet. And this is a very, very, very chunky graph. Let me know you, even though it already has subgraphs and probably needs some more. So first of all, there is a, um, the whole um, instructions how to set everything up is in here. Basically, let me quickly tell you, you need Rivet Chat API and Chatbot UI set up. This can be, there is a whole documentation on my GitHub page of that project, which is linked here. There is also a video from me about it, about that, so that should be doable for you. Then the second thing is, you will need to register at Firebase and create a project there, which is, uh, by the way, Firebase is free, at least in how we use it. Then create a project there and add a real-time database. And when you are being asked um, if you want to run this in test mode, press yes, because that uh, makes it that we don't need to do a lot of authentication, which I did not add. And then you need to copy the Firebase data URL. And let me quickly show you if you are in here. In Firebase, and you set up your domain, then you will find it here. I changed it so you cannot see my uh, real URL. Actually, you could now see it below. So I have to change it. Um, yeah, doesn't matter. But basically, you need to copy this. This is the important value. And this value needs to go into your environment variables of Rivet Chat API, as well as into your Envil app. And for Envil, there's a link here, which basically clones my app. If you press this link here, you get a copy of my app. And the only thing you need to do then, once you have the copy, so basically once you're in here, you need to press add. And then for the first time, you need to select secret from this list. And if you've already done that, um, you can find it here, secrets. Then you can see there's one secret here, the Firebase URL. You need to press on set value and also add the value here and then um, yeah then you can just run the app or you can publish the app which both brings you to the same results so in this case i published it but we could also just press the run button and then we also we can yeah also see it here and if you did some previous tests and you want to reset everything you can press this clear products button here and now the llm is starting fresh Okay, but how does it actually work in the background? So let me at least give you some small overview. I cannot explain it all. Generally, uh, at the moment we are working fully with mock data, so we have product data in here. Those are the eight products and we have lots of data about them so that the LLM knows more than we do and is better informed and can um, tell us yeah, more information than just the few things we are seeing in the front end, which is pretty useful. So this is one of our inputs. Then of course we have a big prompt here where we are telling him that he's the perfect shopping assistant and telling him a bit how it works and that he has tools and what he is not supposed to do when he's using them and what he's supposed to do. Um, we also have, as always with uh, using Rivet Chat API or Graph Input where the chat messages from Chatbot UI are coming in. And we have GPT functions here. So basically we have tools slash functions that we are giving ChatGPT. So for example, uh, there's a hide products function where it can add the IDs of the products that are supposed not to be shown. It's a highlight function to um, yeah, highlight certain products. It can remove the highlights. It can go back to show all the products. And there's a search product function. This is a bit of a fake because it will always find the MacBooks. No matter what you tell it and what it searches for, it will find those eight MacBooks because it's a prototype. We could, of course, add a proper product API there and this would work. And then, uh, leaving all the additional, uh, more complex stuff out of the way, we are basically putting this into a chat. So the functions are um, prompt from chatbot UI and our system prompt. And usually it's calling a function. We can, for example, here, last thing it called was show all products. Um, but it can also, also already respond here. If it calls a function, 
we are going to handle the function calls. So we have a match node here, which is going to uh, map to those functions, which are all in a subgraph. And once one of the functions runs, for example, here, we are getting some information back about the context, like the user sees the following products, information in the order given, and also information what uh, products are hidden, at the moment none, and what products are highlighted. This is important so that the AI is on the same track as we are, and we are talking about the same thing because, I mean, it's not we are not feeding it a, an image in, in a multimodal way or something like that at the moment. We are just giving it that information so it cannot actually see our view in the front end. And then, oops, didn't want to move this. Um, basically, uh, once the function is done, we are doing, we are giving it back to uh, the result of the function back to ChatGPT, and it can then answer uh, and write the the prompt. And with yeah, this is the same as the other chat node put to output, so that it will be streamed. And yeah, basically that's it. There is a bit more to it because it's stateless and we need to save the context so it always knows what products we have been looking at so on so there's some data loading and leading, deleting and storing and stuff around here but yeah that's it and so how does this communicate with firebase also to cover this quickly it's super simple we are just having uh, doing some http calls here and there are different methods to, to either patch the data to only add a small part or to put whole data there. And it's pretty simple. In the end, I mean, I already showed my secret here before, so I can do it as well now. Um, we can see that we are just um, using a path. So we want to save something in a database called products. So we are just adding a products JSON at the end, and then we are just pushing the data in. For example, here, we wanted to remove all the hidden products so we are updating this information with a patch request and yeah then it's being done and simple as that um, we are updating the real-time database and with Anvil let's actually see where can we are here let's stop here uh, our app basically has um, two parts there's a server module so as we can see here we have different functions i mean actually i could remove some of them we're not using any anymore but the most important one is actually here fetch data from firebase and here it's also very simple we are just doing a get request to our url um, and we are just retrieving the information and then of course we also have more code in the front end which adds all those panels, uh, adds the highlights, removes the highlights, and so on. So yeah, this is pretty custom. And you will need to change it. And there's even some meddling in the CSS to make it all look like it should. But still, uh, generally, uh, using Anvil is uh, pretty, is, uh, yeah, it's much simpler than uh, using other front ends. And it's also free. It runs automatically in the cloud. So I think this is a good choice. And basically how it updates is currently there is a timer here. And every one second it's asking uh, Firebase if the database has been updated so that we can see live updates or nearly live updates to our results. We could also put this down to 0 0.5 or 0 0.1 seconds. Yeah, well, Basically, uh, that's it. Um, I hope the technical uh, complexity of this uh, does not scare you off, but um, you're more seeing that the future of uh, yeah, the future of working with LMs could actually be much brighter than it currently is, and I think this should be explored. And um, yeah, maybe just check it out. Um, maybe try to build uh, your own solution. I would be excited to see what other people come up with because there's still so much more that can be done um, to make this better. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. So please like and subscribe. And if you have any comments, please feel free to leave them. Thank you very much and see you soon.